created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look In the land of Israel, there was a prophet named Jonah. A prophet taught other people about God and his love. Jonah told his friends and neighbors that God loved all people. And like God, Jonah tried to love all people and all creatures. Fish looks fresh today, Ophir. Yes, Jonah, the freshest you will ever meet or eat. You know how much I love eating fish. And I'll take a bag of peanuts. I see someone just as hungry as I am. <laughs> hungry, little dove? Here, take some of mine. We're all God's creatures. Sounds like someone's having an argument. This is my pot. No, it is mine. I saw it first. No, I did. I need it to carry water. I need it to carry raisins. Stop. Fighting never solves anything. Besides, you're making me dizzy. My friends, please. God doesn't want you fighting. It upsets him. Now neither of you gets the pot. You were acting badly, just like someone from the city of Nineveh. Do you want God to think we act like the Ninevites? Ah, no. no! No, Jonah. Sorry, Jonah. The Ninevites are enemies of our people. I heard they stole a boat full of fish. Come on. Yes, they are thieves. Yes, they are very bad people. See what happens when you fight. From now on, we will act like Israelites and not be bad like the Ninevites. So Jonah had a very important job. He taught people about God's laws. There came a day when God had an even bigger job for Jonah. Hello, Jonah. God, it's nice to hear your voice. I have an important job for you. What is it? I will do anything for you. There are some people who are not obeying my laws, Jonah. Look what they're doing. The people of Nineveh steal. They are not kind to each other. The children of Nineveh do not take care of older people. Others are lazy. And their king pretends not to see the problems. He only cares about eating all day 
and wearing fancy clothes. Yes, the Ninevites are bad. Send a flood or an earthquake to punish them. No, they are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, your job is to go to Nineveh and tell them about me. Me? Go to Nineveh? I can't. Please give me some other job. Tell them of my love. But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. You must go, Jonah, right now. In 40 days, I will punish them for being bad. But if you're going to punish them, why should I go tell them about you at all? I don't understand. The Ninevites should be punished for being bad. But what if I tell them all about God and they change? Then maybe God won't punish them. I can't do something to help my enemies. Jonah was so confused, he asked his friends what he should do. You know, it's funny, Jonah. Usually, we come to you with questions. This time, I want to know what you think. How can I preach to the enemies of the Israelites? Simple. You can't. Oh, fear is right, Jonah. Don't go there. Don't tell them about God. You do have a problem, Jonah. If you don't preach to them, you disobey God. If you do preach to them, you'll disappoint all your friends. Nobody said being a prophet was easy, Ophir. <sighs> Wait, I know. I'll just hide from God. <laughs> sure, but where can you hide from God? Why, in your store, of course. I know my plan will work, Ophir. If I hide here for 40 days, then God will punish the Ninevites and no one will be mad at me. You call this a hiding place? Here, let me help you. Uh, Ophir, you don't have to go to that much trouble. Look, if you're going to hide from God, you've got to do it right. There! <laughs> and my shop's never been cleaner. Ophir, do you have any flour for baking biscuits? Yes, yes, in that basket. There. No! Wait! No! No! Now that everything's cleaned up, goodbye, Ophir. What? But Jonah, why are you leaving? I'm in the way, and I can't hide from God here in Israel. It's the first place he'd look for me. So where will you go? As far away from Nineveh as I can. I'll travel to the other side of the world, to a city called Tarshish. God will never find me there. We'll miss you, Jonah. Thank you. I have a very lonely trip ahead of me because God will not be with me. So Jonah traveled as far away as he could to run away from God. First, he walked across dry deserts. Then he climbed high mountains. He finally came to the town of Joppa and found a ship that was going to sail for Tarshish. Captain, my name is Jonah. Can I sail with you to Tarshish? Sorry, Jonah. This ship only carries sailors and cargo. Besides, it's bad luck to bring a stranger on board, you know. The sailors on this ship weren't Israelites. They believed in many different gods. 
Ahoy, mate. Help me with this statue. Sir, why not? <clears throat> what? Please, Captain, I must sail away with you. Why? Because I am running away from God. Why? Because he gave me a job to do and I won't do it. I must hide so he won't find me. Ah! <gasps> Did you see that? A dove! He flew right to Jonah! A dove is a sign of good luck, Captain. Very good luck. With Jonah on board, we will have safe passage. They're right. Welcome aboard, Jonah. So Jonah set sail across the vast sea, headed to faraway Tarshish. Jonah saw that the sailors didn't pray to God. They worshiped statues made of stone. Excuse me, what are you doing? Feeding the god of water. If he has a full stomach, he'll make the seas calm. But this isn't a god. <laughs> it's just a rock. My god is the real one. He created the sea, the sky, the animals, all of us, everything. One god created all that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Jonah. See, this is the sun god, the god of the wind, the god of plenty. With so much in the world, you need a lot of gods. Yeah, no one god can rule over everything. <laughs> yes, God does. He is the one and only God. Well then, if he is so wonderful, why are you running away from him? He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell them about him. But they are the enemies of my people, and we'd be better off without them. I've never seen a storm like that. Me either. We're in trouble. Whoa! Sailors prayed to their gods, but the storm just grew stronger. Someone has brought our ship bad luck. Very bad luck. We must find out who it is. Let's throw lots. Then we'll know who brought this storm. The captain and his crew, being superstitious, believed that pieces of wood and bone would tell them who brought bad luck to their ship. There! The lots point to the man who brought us bad luck. <gasps> it's Jonah! Where did you come from? And who are your people? I am an Israelite, and I worship the God of heaven. I'm running away from him. And he has found you. Jonah, what can we do? How do we make the storm go away? Throw me overboard. You must save yourselves. Please, Captain. We have no choice. We must throw Jonah into the sea. His god is more powerful than any of our gods. Jonah, I'm sorry. We've done everything we could do. I know, Captain. It's not your fault. I made God angry. It's me, not you, who should be punished. God of the Israelites, we're sorry for having to throw Jonah into the sea. <laughs> Poor 
Shona. May your God forgive you, Jonah. Jonah found himself in the whale's belly. Now he was really alone. God, I'm sorry for trying to hide from you. Do you hear me, God? Jonah prayed to God for three days and three nights. It's so dark inside this whale And I'm lost at the bottom of the sea I was a fool to run from you Now I know just what you want from me In the belly of a whale One day has gone by I promise to be true After that, Jonah was no longer alone. Hello, Jonah. Oh, God, I'm so glad that you're here with me. You, you tried, tried to hide, hide from me. me. Oh, yes, and I now know that was really, really wrong. Jonah, you have learned your lesson. Come on, let's get you out of here. Jonah, Nineveh is behind that hill. Hurry, go tell them about me and about my love. God, I'm ready to do it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh. And what he had to say was so wonderful. All of the people listened. They believed, and best of all, they changed. God says we shouldn't steal from each other. We are all brothers and sisters in this world. Would you steal from your own family? God says we shouldn't hurt anyone weaker than us. Since we are all God's children, we should protect each other. Children, stop. 
God says we should honor our elders. Don't forget, they helped raise us and looked after us. Even the children were changed, and they gathered around Jonah, just like sheep around their shepherd. Hey, farmer, God says we all have jobs to do, and we should work hard. We should listen to him, since he's the one who gave this wonderful world to us. O oh, king of the Ninevites, this is no way to lead your people. God tells us to care for one another. Ha! Why should I care what your God thinks? Because he is going to punish everyone in this city for being bad. Nineveh will be like this grape. Please believe me, king of the Ninevites. I was sent by the one and the only God. You only have a few days. I do believe you, Jonah. Then know his love and obey his laws. That's all he wants. Jonah told the king all about God's laws. My people, people of Nineveh, hear me. For one week, all of us must fast. No one will eat anything for seven days, and all of us will wear rags. If we do this, we will show Jonah's God how sorry we are for acting so badly. After Jonah told the Ninevites about God and his laws, they changed their ways. Jonah then left the city. He sat on a hill above Nineveh to watch God punish them. Jonah, I'm proud of you. The Ninevites have changed their ways. But aren't you still going to punish them? I am not going to punish anyone, Jonah. But God, they are such bad people. Shouldn't they be punished? They have heard my voice through you, Jonah, and have changed their hearts. I love them as I love the Israelites, as I love all people. I was afraid of this. I saved the enemies of my people. Go home, Jonah. It will be okay. No, wait! Please, God, I am more confused than ever. Jonah didn't know what to do, where to go. He just started walking into the desert. Unfortunately, the desert was hot and he didn't have any food. I'm so tired. Hungry and thirsty. Thank you, God. Thank you for this plant and for saving me. The next morning, the plant was dead and Jonah was mad. He was mad because God let a worm destroy the plant. Jonah. Why are you angry? You let this wonderful plant die that gave me food and shelter, like you took away my hope yesterday when you didn't punish the Ninevites. You're mad because the plant is dead. You cared more about this small plant than the whole city of Nineveh, but you didn't do anything to keep it alive. So? How do you think I'd feel if I punished all the people of Nineveh? There are men, women, and children that I made and cared for over many years. They never knew or loved me until you came. Shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Go home and tell your friends about Nineveh and the plant. So Jonah went home. I can't wait to see my friends and eat all my favorite foods. Except for one food. <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I eat fish again. Jonah was accepted back by his friends, and he spent the rest of his life teaching about God's laws, and especially about God's love.
many, many years ago in the land of Israel, the people were waiting for a very important event. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They heard the old story that one day God was going to send them a new king, a king who would protect them, bring them peace, and give the people more freedom. When is the new king going to come anyway? Our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents promised he would. They said he was coming. Yeah, but, but when? Even in King Herod's palace, people waited. Faster, faster! <laughs> when will that new and better king get here? What was that? Nothing. No talking aloud. You will eat only bread and water for the next 30 days. No, 50 days. Old stale bread. And only four drops of water. No, make that three drops of water a day. What are you looking at? Then, one day, in the town of Nazareth, a young woman named Mary had a most amazing visitor, an angel. <laughs> Who are you? Please don't be afraid, Mary. I am the angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? God has chosen you from all the women of the world to be the mother of His Son. God has chosen me? How can this be? Everything is possible with God. You will have a son. He will be the Son of God. And you will call the baby Jesus. Whatever God wants, I will do. Oh. Mary loved a man named Joseph. One night, an angel came to Joseph in his dream. Joseph, God has great and wonderful plans for you and Mary. Mary is going to have God's son. He will be God's promised king. Give him the name of Jesus and take good care of Mary and the baby king when he comes. Mary, my Mary. God sent an angel to tell me about the child. I love you, Mary. I love you too, Joseph. Soon after, Mary and Joseph were married. It was right about at this time that Augustus Caesar, the emperor of the whole Roman Empire, wanted to count the people who lived under his ruling. 25, 26, 27. There are 692 people from the town of Hebron and 839 from the town of Jericho. Add it to the list. 28, 29, 30. I'm getting tired. Send servants out to count all the people in my land. Everyone was ordered to go to their hometown so they could be counted. Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem, the town where he was from. Bethlehem was very far away. Excuse me, Shepherd. Do you know how far Bethlehem is? It's a long trip. 70 miles from here. Don't worry, Mary. I won't. I feel very safe with you, Joseph. For you see, Mary was expecting the new baby to arrive soon. Thank you, Shepherd. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. By day, they traveled many miles. We're more than halfway there. I'm sure we'll be there in no time. Here, Mary. It's nice and cold. Thanks. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> <sighs> 
At night, they slept in the open air. <laughs> ah. The next afternoon, they saw a sign. Bethlehem was only three miles away. We're almost there. Soon we'll be in a comfortable room at the inn. There were many travelers in Bethlehem that night. Where can I get a good meal? Where's the inn? Where's a good place to stay? Good evening, kind man. Can you tell us how to get to the inn? Of course. Why not take the shortcut? Just go around this corner, then up the steep hill. You'll pass the granary, then go right, then left, then two rights, then your second left, then let's see. Right, left, right, left, and you're there. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Excuse me, do you know where the inn is? Sure, it's right at the end of this street. It is? That's wonderful. Thank you, little girl. You're welcome. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. It was closer than we thought. We're here. Yes? Quit pushing. I'd like a room for my wife and myself. So would everyone. We have too many people here now. My husband keeps saying, yes, yes, yes. Tonight, we'll have to sleep in the kitchen. But we've been traveling for days. What's going on here? They want a room. What else? Uh, I'm sorry. We really have no more space at all. My wife is very tired. We came from very far away. Yes, so have a lot of people. And my wife is expecting a baby. I'll tell you what I can do. We have a stable out back. It's full of animals, but at least you'll have a roof over your heads. It'll be warmer and safer than sleeping out in the open. Thank you. You're very kind. Come, I'll show you. You have some important company. I hope you'll be comfortable here. It's the best I can do. Thank you. We're very grateful. Let's try and make the best of it. During that night, a most wonderful thing happened. The baby was born, God's little son. We'll call the baby Jesus. Mary and Joseph loved their new baby boy very much. I must wrap him to keep him warm and comfortable. The ox's feeding box. Jesus can sleep in here. And so the baby Jesus lay in a manger, surrounded by the warmth of love and the protection of God, who was now ready to let all of heaven spread the news of the baby's birth. That night, just outside the town of Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. How can you let your sheep walk around all night? He should be sleeping. My sheep? That one is yours. You make him go to sleep. I'm not going to walk way over there. You take care of him. No, you. No, you! Look, it's no big deal. You just have to be nice to him, that's all. What do you mean? Just tell him to go to sleep. Hey, sheep! Go to sleep! Come over here, little guy. 
It's time to sleep. Come here, this way. Ooh. Greetings. Oh. 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 Ah. Oh. Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring good news of great joy. Tonight, a most wondrous thing has happened. Here in Bethlehem, the Son of God was born. He is Christ the Lord, the King that comes from God. His name is Jesus, and he is wrapped snugly in a manger. A manger? You can go see him right now. It is the happiest time of the world. Whoa! Wow. Ow! A king in a manger? Right here in Bethlehem? I always thought he'd be in a palace. Let's go into town and see what the angel's talking about. Uh, let's go into town and see what the angel is talking about. I just said that. Then let's go. Whoa! Whoa. This way. Hey, where are you going? Get back with the other sheep. Didn't I tell you to go back? Oh. All right, but you'd better behave. Sheep. The angel was right. Look. He's really there. Hello there. What brings you here? We came to see the baby sent from God. We know about him because an angel came and told us. Then many angels came and sang about God's glory and peace on earth. The angel said he'd be wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Just like this. It's true. What the angel said is true. The Son of God, the King in a manger. Mary's heart filled with wonder as the shepherds told their story. She knew that her newborn child was the Son of God. Meanwhile, in the far distant lands of the East, wise men who study the stars mm -hmm. saw something new in the sky. Oh. Mm. Oh, oh, my. Oh, I beg your pardon. Not at all. It was entirely my fault. Uh, no, it was me, really. I wasn't looking where I was going. I was noticing that star. But so was I. What a coincidence. I was, too. I study the stars. But so do I. Uh, so do I. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. I am from the Far East. Ah, I am from the Near East. I am from the Mid East. Have you ever been to the Furthest East? Yoo-hoo! Wise men! <laughs> Down here! <laughs> you fellas wouldn't by any chance happen to know where that big fat star came from. This was just what we were wondering. We've never seen that star before. It's a completely new star. Unless... Unless... The star is a sign from God. Of course! Oh, oh, my! A sign, a sign from, from God? God. Wow. That has to be it. The star is a sign from God? <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see, it is said that a new and bright star would be seen in the sky when the new king is born. Really? But there it is, the new and bright star. It's also said that if we follow that star, it'll lead us to the new king. A new king! He's come at last! A star is a sign! So, are you going to follow it? Absolutely. Positively. Certainly. We're going. 
gonna follow that star as long as it takes, no matter how far, guiding us on to the child, the chosen one. Starlight, star bright, glimmer of hope, glorious sight, shine on, shine on. of gold royalty maybe he'll shine just like the star for all time starlight star bright glimmer of hope glorious sight shine on shine on into the night lead us to wise men and bring us the news. So the wise men traveled far from the east. They kept following the star, never taking their eyes off it, not knowing where it would lead them. Look, the star is over Israel. We should go to the king's palace in Jerusalem. The newborn king must be there. Please forgive me, Your Majesty. I am so sorry to wake you, but the most unusual thing has happened. Tell me what it is already. And it better be good or I'll have you locked up. Yes, of course, Your Majesty. It's just that there are wise men visiting from the East. Yes, yes, and? Well, they say they have come to see the King. So, send them in. <laughs> they say they've come to see the newborn King. What are they talking about? Do they think I was born yesterday? Perhaps they were thinking there was another king. Another king? Absurd. Ridiculous. How can there be another king? And if there is someone pretending to be a king, I want to know where he is. He'll be sorry, I'll tell you that. Yes, Your Majesty, of course, Your Majesty. But what shall I tell the wise men from the East? Tell them to get lost. No. On second thought, get my advisors and hurry. Advisors! Advisors! Get in here! Yes, Your Majesty? What do you know about this newborn king? Oh, has he been born? Has who been born? The king. I am the king. We mean the other one. What other one? The one you speak of. The one I speak of? I don't know anything about any king except that everyone else seems to know about him. Why wasn't I told? Nobody tells me a thing. But we didn't know he was born yet. Who? The newborn king. <sighs> okay, if you're so smart, just where is this newborn king? The old stories say he will be born in Bethlehem. 
The stories say that, do they? That'll be all. Send these wise men in at once. Who told you to stop? Keep those fans going. And the rest of you, get back to work. Your Majesty, I present the wise men from the East. King Herod, we have come to meet the newborn king. And where did you hear of this king? We saw the star that God put in the sky. A star? From God? A beautiful star. A bright star. A sign from God. <laughs> we knew that if we followed the star, it would lead us to the new king. We want to worship him. This new king is not here. Then where is he? He's in Bethlehem. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you should go find him. Yes, see what I care. Go try and find him. And if you do find him, come and tell me where he is. I would like to worship the new king myself. Enough of that! When the wise men left the palace, they looked into the sky and saw the star once again. Look! There it is! On to Bethlehem! The wise men followed the star right into Bethlehem. Up this way. Come on, everyone. Come see the newborn king. And there, right above the manger, was the star. The wise men knew they had been guided to the right place. We've traveled from distant lands to celebrate the newborn king. May we come in? Please. We knew the baby was born because of the star. We followed it all the way here. We have brought gifts. The wise men gave Jesus gold and sweet-smelling perfume and incense. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting us worship the king. We thank God for his great wisdom. He has sent us his son. Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king. Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king. The wise men never did go back to King Herod to tell him the good news about baby Jesus. Everyone rejoiced and thanked God for sending them his son, the new king of the world.